Hello students, this is an Earth Science Reference Table Review tutorial for the Regents exam. This reference table, as you know, it's it's really important because in the Regents exam you will get like at least 40% of qu your questions from this reference table. So today um, I'll be talking about properties of water from the first page of the ESRT and some relevant Regents questions. All right, so let's get it started. So first thing, properties of water. So let's see what is in there. So first thing, heat energy gain during melting, 334 joules per gram. So what it means is that if you have a small ice cube, let's say this is a small ice cube. Okay, and this is one gram, a very small, ice cube and you are going to melt this so to melt this obviously you need to apply heat right you are applying heat and then you are getting liquid water okay so you are heating it and that heat energy is gained by this ice so how much 334 joules so if you are melting one gram of ice you are gaining 334 joules of energy Okay, so that's the meaning of the first line. The second line, so you know that there are three phases of water. So you have solid, liquid, and vapor, or gas. So you started from solid, you're melting it, you're getting water, then you're freezing it. This time, energy is release remember you gain 334 joules of energy so you if you are going back to the ice state you are going to release the same amount of energy similarly heat energy gained during vaporization so if you have a glass of water and you are heating this again then the water will evaporate right so that is vaporization and this time you are gaining so this amount the heat is 2260 joules for one gram so if you have one gram of water usually we say liters or gallons right but i'm just saying you are gaining 2260 joules condensation that means you're going back to the water state from the gas state and this time you're releasing this energy same 2260 so that's the four lines and the last line is also important the density of water at 3.98 degrees celsius is one gram per milliliter okay so this thing you need to know that this is the max density of water so the max density of water is one gram per milliliter if it is less than this the temperature is less than this or higher than this the density will decrease okay so um, I think you have basic ideas about this uh, five lines all right now let's look at some rele relevant regions questions so I'm gonna use this book so question number one which uh, phase change requires water to gain 2260 joules per gram so you already know this, I believe. If we look at the reference table, which phase change requires water to gain 2260 joules per gram? So remember you're gaining energy and this is 2260. So the state is vaporization. So you can say liquid water vaporizing. The next one, question number two, during which phase change of water is the most energy released into the environment? You are releasing energy to the environment and I, I want to find out which one is the max. So I already know that if we are releasing energy, there are two. One is freezing, another is condensation. But condensation is releasing more. This is 2260 and this is only 334. Alright, now um, let's look at question number five. What is the total number of joules required to melt 100 gram of ice at 0 degrees Celsius 
to liquid water at zero degrees Celsius. I want you to try question number three and four. If you can get them right, that will be great. So question number five is a little tricky. You need to know this that I told you before that to melt one gram of ice, you, uh, you need to apply 334 joules of energy. That means this ice cube is gaining this energy. Right? This is for one gram of ice. But this question is asking if you're melting 100 gram of ice. So remember, to melt one gram of ice, 334 joules of energy is required. So one gram, you need 334 joules. So for 100 grams, you will be needing a lot more, right? So if you know multiplication, you know this. So you multiply 334 times 100, you get 334,00 joules. Now let's look at here. You can see choice three is the right answer, okay? So I hope that you now know the properties of water and how to apply this knowledge to solve recent questions. All right. In the next video, I'll be talking about um, specific heats of common minerals. All right. So there are uh, five tables on the first page. So we'll be talking about each of them later on. Okay. So that's it for today, everyone. Thanks for watching the video. And I hope to see you all next time. Bye.